Good morning, my name is Alberto uh, Bondandro. Hi, everybody. So, together with Gabriele uh, Benedetti, we are giving this second part of the class in uh, complex analysis. So, as you know, circumstances are rather peculiar. And, uh, okay, unfortunately, we cannot be with you in Pakistan. And actually, I cannot even be at my university. So I'm actually filming this class at home, where fortunately I have a blackboard. So the blackboard is small, but I hope that uh, this will, will work. And then we will have occasion to meet each other uh, online. Okay, let's start. So uh, today's topic is Laurent series. But before we go into this Laurent series, uh, let me recall briefly uh, something that you saw with, uh, with Daniele in the, in the first part, namely the Cauchy formula. So here is the situation. We have a holomorphic function, f, on some open subset u of c into c. So this is our open subset, it has folds, and the function, this is the domain of the function f, and inside u there is a contour. So gamma is a contour in U. No contour, let me recall, uh, this means this is a, a simple closed curve and it's uh, piecewise smooth and it's parameterized counterclockwise. Moreover, so every simple closed curve bounds a bounded region in uh, Plane. This bounded region is what we denote by I gamma, the interior of gamma, contour means gamma. And we're assuming that so not only the contour is new, but the whole interior of gamma is also contained in you. In other words, there are no holes. U has no holes inside the interior of, uh, of gamma. Then in this case, we pick a point Z0 in the interior of gamma. And so Cauchy formula tells us that the value of f at Z0 is completely determined by the values of f along this uh, curve gamma. More precisely, we have the following formula. F at C0 is 1 over 2pi times the integral over gamma of F Z divided by Z minus C0 in Z. Okay, this is Cauchy formula, the Cauchy formula you have seen in the first part of, the, of this class. Um, this is a very important formula, maybe the most important formula in the whole uh, complex analysis. And you've seen several consequences of this, this formula. Here we will need one of them, namely the analyticity of holomorphic functions which says the following. So, uh, so the short version is uh, uh, holomorphic functions locally are uh, expressible as sum of power series. More precise statement, I will take a disk, so dr0, for me, 
So this is the notation for this is an open disk centered at Z0 with radius R. And we'll assume that this disk is contained in the domain of our homomorphic function U. In this case, if this is so, then uh, we can express, so inside this disk, we can express the function f as a sum of a power series centered at z0. In other words, for every z in this disk, r0, f of z is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity, some coefficients a n, z minus z0 to the power n. Okay. So there is a power series whose radius of convergence is at least r. So this power series is so it's centered in z0 and it converges at least in this whole disk of radius r. And this power series, the sum of this power series, is exactly our function. Not only, but we also have a formula for the coefficients a n. The coefficients a n are uniquely determined by the function f, and they have this form: a n is one over two p i integral. So now we integrate over a circle centered at z0 and of radius smaller than r. Let me denote this circle by and use the notation that you have also in the book of Hobie. So k z0 rho. Okay. This is a circle centered in z0 of radius rho, and here rho. We write it here, it's positive and it's smaller than r, so that this circle is contained in the open disk. So we integrate over this circle. Of course, this circle is parameterized counterclockwise. And here we integrate the function f of z, z minus z0 to the power n plus 1 in dc. Okay. So this is the formula for the coefficients of the power series that we've already, already seen. Notice that in the particular case uh, n um, equals 0, you recover exactly the Cauchy, Cauchy formula. Okay. These were uh, this is the, uh, the Cauchy formula and its consequence, the fact that every holomorphic function can be expressed as the sum uh, of a, a power series locally. And of course, this has also many other consequences. For instance, uh, it implies that the uh, holomorphic functions so in the definition of holomorphic function, you define holomorphic functions as, as functions which are uh, differentiable, complex differentiable, but actually then you find out that you can differentiate them as many times you like. Okay? So they are smooth functions. Okay, and now let's go to The subject of this lecture, namely Laurent series. So, what is a Laurent series? A Laurent series is an expression of the following form. So, I write it f of z. So, it's a sum of some coefficients a n z minus z zero to the power n, uh, so exactly like a power series, but now n can also take negative values. So this is an infinite sum going from minus infinity to plus infinity. 
Okay, so this is a low round series centered at the point Z0 with coefficients AN. AN are as usual complex numbers. Okay, first of all, we have to understand exactly uh, what does it mean for such a series to, to converge. Okay, because this is actually yeah, an infinite sum, it's not strictly speaking a, a series. By this, by definition, we mean just so we split this sum into two sums. We first have the sum n going from 0 to infinity, a n z to z0 of n. Okay, we are taking the non-negative uh, indices n. So this sum builds what is known as the this is the regular part. of the Laurent series, and then you write separately the sum with uh, n negative. And let me change variable, let me call m will be minus n, so I can rewrite the other term as m going from 1 to infinity, coefficient a minus m, and then I write 1 over z minus z0 to the power n. Okay. I wrote here exactly the sum going from minus infinity, n goes from minus infinity to minus 1, but then I just changed the name of the index. Now uh, the index is m and m equals minus n. Okay, so here we have negative powers of z minus z0. And this second series builds what is known as the principal part. Of the power of this Laurent series. Okay, so we will say that this series converges when both these two series converge. Okay, this is the definition. And analog, you see, this series converge absolutely when both these series converge absolutely. Okay, um, what can we say about the region, so the set of Z for which a Laurent series uh, converge? So this is not difficult. We can just use what we know about uh, uh, power series. This, after all, the first sum is exactly a power series, and the second sum is also a power series, but not in the variable z minus z0, but in the variable 1 over z minus z0. So, if we denote by r the radius of convergence, so convergence radius of the first series, so of the series a n w n w to the power n n zero to infinity. So recall the radius of convergence of a power series is in general a number in zero plus infinity. It can be zero if the series converges only when w is zero, and it can also be plus infinity. If the series converges for all complex values of, uh, of W, or it can be uh, any positive number in, uh, in between. So, what do we know? If R denotes the uh, convergence radius of this series, then we can say for sure that this first series, the regular part, regular part converges actually absolutely. For, for all z with z minus z0 in absolute value, strictly less than r. And it does not converge when the absolute value of z minus z0 is strictly larger than r. This we know about the regular part. Now we look at the principal part. 
we denote by rho the convergence radius of this series, of the power series. So this is the power series m goes from 1 to infinity, a minus m, w to the m. This is again a, a honest uh, power series, so it has a convergence radius. We call it uh, rho. Again, this is a number in 0 plus infinity, maybe 0 in infinity. And uh, so this is the convergence radius of this series. And then we can denote by small r the inverse of rho, so 1 over rho, with the usual convention that the 1 over 0 is plus infinity and 1 over plus infinity is 0. So this is our number small, small r. And then we can notice that uh, so our principal part, this is a composition. It's uh, the composition of this power series. It's composed with a map mapping z into 1 over z minus z0. And because of this, we obtain that the principal part converges absolutely. So this series here converges absolutely when w in absolute value is strictly less than rho. But here now w is 1 over z minus z0. So it means that this converges absolutely when z minus z0 is bigger than 1 over rho, and 1 over rho is precisely r. Okay? So we, we have the convergence, so the principal part converges when z minus z0 is less than bigger r, and the principal part converges when the absolute value of z minus z0 is larger than, uh, than r. Okay? So let me summarize these results now in a, in a proposition. So now you see, uh, in general, these are two different, so these are two different power series, and uh, there is there's in principle no relationship between these two numbers, big R and uh, rho, or if you want, uh, small r. Uh, but when it happens that small r is smaller than big R, then we get a region where the Laurent series converges. You know, we said, in, in order for this series to converge, we need the convergence of both terms. The first term converges when the distance between z and z0 is smaller than big R, and the second part converges when the distance is bigger than small r. So when small r is bigger than is, sorry, when small r is smaller than big R, we get convergence whenever the distance between z and z0 is between small r and big R. Let me rewrite this as a proposition. Given a Laurent series, there exist numbers small r and big R. They are both in zero plus infinity, such that so uh, the Laurent series converges. Laurent series converges actually absolutely for z minus z0 between z 
small r and big r. And the Morano series does not converge, so no convergence. If either z minus z zero is smaller than small r or z minus z zero is bigger than r. And of course, on the boundary, so when z minus z zero is small r or big r, uh, different behaviors are possible exactly like for for power series. Okay, and so in other words, it's useful to introduce uh, this notation. Let's call A R big R is zero. This is the annulus feature. So here is Z zero. Here is a small disk of radius small r, and here is a bigger disk of radius big r. And by a small r big r z0, I denote this angles between these two zeros. Okay, the open angles, in other words, this is the set of z's, c, such that z minus z0 in absolute value is smaller than big R, but bigger than small r. And here again, uh, zero, zero is less or equal than small r. Small r is allowed to be zero, and this is uh, smaller than big r, and this is less or equal than plus infinity. Big r is allowed to be plus infinity. Okay, this is our open annulus, and this proposition is telling us Laurent series converge absolutely in a in a in an open annulus, and they don't converge outside of this open annulus. Moreover, if you remember, uh, power series actually converge uniformly on every disk whose radius is strictly smaller than the convergence radius, and then from that we also obtain that if r small r prime and big r prime are such that big r prime is strictly smaller than big r and small r prime is strictly bigger than small r, in other words, if you are looking at an even smaller here, annulus. Contained in the big one, okay? The outer radius is big R prime and the inner radius is small R prime. Then we obtain that the Laurent series Run series converges uniformly on this annulus A R prime B R prime center at C. Okay, so this proposition tells us everything we need to know about convergence of this uh, uh, Laurent series, and it's just a consequence of the analogous results for, uh, for power series. Just one more information on the notation. Um, it's useful to consider here, in the case, small r equals zero. Angulus a zero r centered at z0. What is this? This is the set of all points whose distance from z0 is strictly less than r and which are different from z0. So in other words, this is what is called the puncture disk. It's also denoted by d prime big r c0. 
So it's the disk, the open disk GR C0 minus the point C0 itself. Okay. In our notation for this angle, we also have a, 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 a special case, this uh, uh, punctured, uh, punctured disk. Very good. Now maybe it's time to show an example. So let's see some examples of Laurent series and let's determine the angles in which they converge. Okay, so example one. Let's look at the Laurent series sum and start with minus two and goes to infinity z to the power n. Okay. So this is exactly like the geometric series, but instead of starting with n equal to zero, we started with n equal to minus two. In other words, you can isolate so the negative uh, uh, powers of n are 1 over z plus 1 over z squared. And then we have the non-negative powers of z, so z to the n, n goes from 0 to infinity. Okay, so this here is the principal part. It's the part with negative powers of z, and this is the regular part. Okay. So this is a Laurent series with z0 equal 0. It's a Laurent series centered at 0, and its regular part is a honest, is a honest uh, power series. Its principal part in this case, it's uh, it's finite. We have only finitely many many terms, uh, but still, it's a it's a long series. So now let's look at the uh, radii of convergence. The regular part, as you know, is a the geometric series. Its radius of convergence is one. As Convergence radius dr equal to 1. The principal part, well, uh, the principal part, uh, the associated series would be just the series n goes from 1, or let me do this before, the letter n, n goes from 1 to 2, w to the n. This is just a polynomial. It's w plus w squared. And a polynomial, of course, it's a particular case of a series, but with a, a convergence radius plus infinity. So rho, rho is the convergence radius of the series to the power series associated with the principal part, is infinity. And this means that the inverse small r is zero. Therefore, the this Laurent series converges F converges on so the angulus of convergence is in this case the angulus with radii small r is zero, big R is one, centered at zero. And this is nothing else but the punctured disk of radius 1 centered at 0. So for all, so this uh, 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 this series converges for all z non zero and in absolute value less than uh, less than 1. And actually, of course, you can also compute what is the sum of this series because we know the sum of the the geometric series, for instance, you can compute f of z 
a bit better to go back to this expression. This we can write it as 1 over z squared sum n from minus 2 to infinity z to the n. So here I am dividing by z squared and then I multiply again, meaning that here I put an exponent n plus 2. And now this becomes, if I change the indices, this is 1 over z squared sum n goes from 0 to infinity z to the n. I just call n plus 2 n. And this is the sum of, uh, uh, of the geometric series. So we get the formula 1 over z squared 1 minus z. Okay. And without this formula, this holds for all z in this disk. Puncture this with this one center at zero. Okay, this was our first example of a um, of a Laurent series. Now let's look at the second example. So in this first example. The principal part was just a polynomial. Now we'll have an example where the principal part is also a series. So let's look at example two. And this is f of z equals sum n goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And as coefficients, we take uh, 1 over absolute value n factorial z to the n. Okay. We look at this Laurent series. Again, we divide, we write first the regular part. The regular part is this sum, but when n is non negative and goes from 0 to infinity, then this absolute value goes away. So this is just z to the n divided by n factorial. So this is the regular part. Plus sum again m is minus n, m goes from 1 to infinity, and uh, here we have 1 over m factorial, right? Because the absolute value of uh, n in this case is minus n because n is negative, but m is minus n. So here we get the factorial and here we get 1 over z. And this is the principal part. So, what's the convergence radius of the regular part? This is the power series defining the exponential function, and as you know, its convergence radius is plus infinity. So in this case, b r is plus infinity. What about the convergence radius on this side? So the series 1 over n factorial w to the n, this is also the exponential the series associated to the exponential function with the only difference that this index starts with 1 and not with, uh, with the zero. But then this means that also the other radius of convergence rho is also plus infinity. And hence, its inverse, small r, is zero. So we get convergence on the analogous zero plus infinity centered at zero. In other words, this is just c minus zero. Okay. So this Laurent series converges actually absolutely for every z, for every complex number z different from zero. And uh, again, if we want, we can write down 
the sum of this uh, uh, of this plural series. The first term is nothing else but this is the exponential into the z, and this so this is one over z to the end. So this is the exponential. But applied, so this is e to the 1 over z minus 1 because this uh, sum here starts with m equal 1. Okay? So in this case, we were able to write down explicitly the sum of this uh, Laurent uh, series. Okay. So far, so good, I hope. And uh, let's go on with this Laurent series and ask ourselves remember, for the power series, we had a way, a formula for the coefficients. So the Cauchy formula actually gave, also, gave us a formula for the coefficients of the power series. I would like to see if, um, if this is the same also for this uh, Laurent series. And this is actually so. What we will prove is the following proposition. So we consider a Laurent series f of z equal sum n minus infinity plus infinity a n z minus the zero to the power n. So this is a run series and assume that this converges converging on some analogous uh, a small r, big r, centered at uh, z0 with small r strictly less than big r. So we are considering a Laurent series which does converge somewhere in some non-trivial some non-trivial angles. Then Then we can express these coefficients a n by the following formula. a n is 1 over 2 p e i integral over the circle k centered at the 0 radius rho f of z, z minus z0 to the power n plus 1 in the set. Where here, this rho, rho is any number between big, small r and big r. Where rho is between big r and small r. Okay, so let me make a picture. So we have a Laurent series, which converges in this uh, annulus with radius, smaller radius is small r, because the radius is big r, as usual, the center is zero. And so the Laurent series, by assumption, converges here. Then we can express the coefficients a n by this formula. Where we are integrating this k z zero rho, this is the circle. We just keep some radius rho between r small r and big r, and we integrate over this circle as usual, counter counterclockwise. Okay. So this uh, I denoted this uh, radius by rho, but this is not has nothing to do with the row before it's not the inverse of r. It's just any number between small r and, uh, and big r. Okay.
So this formula is easy to remember also because it's exactly the same formula we had for the coefficients of a, of a power series. So for a run series, we get exactly the same formula, but now this formula holds for every n in z. It holds also for negative, uh, negative uh, indices. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the formula. Let's prove it. I think I can erase it because in any case you do know the formula. And then we have more space for the proof. So proof. In the proof, we actually start with this integral, the integral over this circle centers the zero radius row, f of z divided by z minus z zero to the power n plus one in dz. And uh, what we want to do is to compute this integral and show that this integral will be exactly uh, 2pi times an. This is what we want to show. Okay, so to compute this, so we said f was the sum of, uh, uh, of the Laurent series, so we plug in instead of f, we write down its expression as a Laurent series. What you get is this integral of this circle, 0 rho. And here we have, so f is a Laurent series, and now the variable, let me call it m, since the variable m is already taken, I call it m, m goes to minus infinity to plus infinity, and here I have a m. So in, in the function f, I would have z minus z zero to the power m. But then we are dividing by z minus z zero to the power n plus one. And so here we can write m minus n minus one. And this is an integral in dz. Okay, we have the following expression. Uh, the next thing we would like to do is, of course, to switch this integral and this uh, sum. Can we do this? Yes, we can. The reason is, uh, in our first proposition, we said that the Laurent series actually converge uniformly on every annulus which is strictly on any, say, on any closed annulus which is strictly contained in the open annulus where we do have convergence. So in particular, we have a uniform convergence of the Laurent series on this uh, circle, because this circle is contained inside the open annulus. So here we have uniform convergence of this, uh, this series, of course, which of course means that both so this series we write as sum of principal part plus uh, regular part, and both these series converge uniformly on this set. And we know that when we have uniform convergence on, uh, um, on this uh, circle, then we can exchange the sum and the integral, and so we can write sum m minus infinity plus infinity, integral k z0 rho, this am, we can run it outside, am, and here we have z minus z0 to the power m minus n minus 1 in this. Okay, we got this formula, and now we have to compute these, uh, these integrals. Um, to compute these integrals, so let me rewrite, or maybe let me do first a step. Here we can make 
a change of variable z minus z0, this I can call it w. Z was moving on this circle centered at z0, radius rho, meaning that now the difference, z minus z0, is moving now on a circle centered at zero, and still radius rho. So this we can just rewrite it as sum n minus so minus infinity to plus infinity an integral circle centered at zero to radius rho, and here we have w to the n minus n minus 1 in D. Okay, now we have to compute these, uh, uh, these integrals. So what can we say? So here we have an arbitrary integer. So we have, we have to compute the integral of a power, of an arbitrary power of W on, on a circle. So the integral of w to the k, let me call for a moment this uh, exponent k, in dw, on a circle, k centered at zero. What is this value? Well, if k, if k is uh, greater or equal than zero, then w to the k is a holomorphic function. So it's a polynomial, it's a holomorphic function on the whole uh, plane. So uh, it's, it's a holomorphic function on the whole plane when we integrate it over a closed curve. This is a closed curve that whose interior con is contained in the domain of the holomorphic function, and then we know that uh, the integral of this uh, Holomorphic function along this closed curve has to be zero. So this integral is zero if k is greater or equal to zero. Or if you want, you can also write a primitive of w to the k and compute it and continue you find that it's uh, zero. Uh, what about negative case? Well, if k, when I claim that it's also zero if k is strictly less than minus one. The reason is that when k is strictly less than minus one, the function w to the k has a primitive on c minus zero. So the function w going into w to the k plus 1 divided by 1 over k plus 1, this function is a primitive of the function w goes to w to the k on c minus the origin. And this is true whenever this is defined, namely whenever k is not minus 1. If k is not minus 1. Right? So here we are integrating on a, uh, a function, a homomorphic function on a closed curve, but in a domain where this homomorphic function does have a uh, primitive. And then, as you know, when you you know, you can write when you integrate on a curve, the, the integral of a homomorphic function on a, on a curve is exactly, if you do have a primitive, it's the difference of the value of the primitive at the two endpoints of the curve. But this circle is a closed curve, so when we integrate uh, our function, which does have a primitive on a closed curve, we obtain uh, zero. So this is also zero in this case. What remains? It remains just the case k equal minus 1. In the case k equal minus 1, so the function w goes into 1 over w, 
this function does not have a primitive on C minus the origin. No, its primitive wants to be the, the, logar the logarithm. The logarithm is the primitive of 1 over W. But as you know, the logarithm can be defined in the complex plane, but you always have to remove at least uh, something like a half line. You don't have a logarithm which is defined on the whole C minus the origin. So here we have no primitive, and uh, so this argument doesn't work. And indeed, what is the integral of 1 over W? dw k0 rho. This is an integral that you for sure have already computed. You can compute it just uh, using polar coordinates and you get the usual formula. This integral is 2 pi. Okay. Again, the fact that this integral is 0 also shows that 1 over w does not have a primitive on c minus, minus the origin. Okay, so what we found out is that the integral of w to the k on this circle, centered at 0, is always 0 except in the case k equal minus 1, in which case its value is 2 pi i. Which means that here, in this sum, all the terms, the only terms which matter is the terms, the only terms which give a non trivial contribution to this sum is when this exponent is exactly minus 1. But this exponent is minus 1 exactly when m equals n. So this is a, an infinite sum, but all of the terms are 0 except for 1, the term with m equal n, and in this case, this value is. To pi computed here and here we have a n. Okay, so if we look at this formula back, a n is this integral divided by two pi. This finishes the proof of this proposition. Okay, so this proposition. Uh, it tells us that the usual formula for the coefficients of, uh, of a power series holds also for Laurent series. And in particular, it also tells us that the uh, Laurent series expansion of a function is, uh, is, always, uh, is always unique. Um, because we, yeah, we were able to determine the, the coefficients directly from the uh, from the function. Now we want to ask ourselves the inverse question, namely, well, first of all, I should say something. Um, so we said that. Uh, um, Laurent series converge on uh, anguli. So, on, uh, if I have a Laurent series and it, if it converges on an analog, then it defines a function there. Easy fact. So, if f of z this is a power is a Laurent series and minus infinity plus infinity, an z to the minus zero to the n converging on the angles r, small r, big r, centered at zero, then this function f, f is holomorphic. Here on this angles. Okay. R, big R, zero. Okay. This is of course easy to show. We said the, uh, what's the meaning of this Laurent series? This is the sum of two parts, uh, regular part and principal part. The regular part is just a, a usual power series, and we know that 
sums of power series are holomorphic functions. The principal part is a power series but composed with the map mapping Z into uh, Z goes into 1 over Z minus 0. Okay. The principal part of the power of our run series is a power series, which is a holomorphic function, composed with this function, which is also holomorphic. And we know that the composition of two holomorphic functions is holomorphic. So therefore, um, Laurent series defined holomorphic functions on the angles of, uh, of convergence. Converse. Assume that we have now a holomorphic function, please. Assume that I have a holomorphic function on some domain, say this, this, and then in my domain I see an angus, so this is this one. So this is my domain U of the homomorphic function, and here I see an, uh, an angulus centered at some point uh, Z0. This point Z0 is not necessarily in the, in the domain U, but the angulus is, the angulus is in, the, in the domain. Question. Can I express my function as the sum of a Laurent series converging on the as analogous. So this is a very similar question to the question in the analyticity of uh, complex functions, of a uh, holomorphic function. Now we know that if we have a disk in our domain, then on that disk the function is the holomorphic function is the sum of a power series. Now instead of a disk, we have an analogous, and we are asking is uh, is our holomorphic function the sum in this case of our Laurent series? And the answer will be again yes, and the proof will actually be very similar to the proof of analysis of holomorphic functions, namely we use strongly the Cauchy, Cauchy formula. So here is the precise proposition. So we have f a homomorphic function. On some open subset U, and then we have some angles A small r, big r, z0 contained in the domain of our homomorphic function. Here, small r is strictly less than big r, so it's a good trivial angles. Small r as usual could be zero, big r could also be infinity. And uh, then, then f on this angles is the sum of a Laurent series. Then there is a formula f of z is the sum a n z minus zero to the power n uh, n goes to minus infinity plus infinity. And this equality holds for every z in this angles. So this proposition is that then there are coefficients a n such that this Laurent series converges and converges on this angulus and converges precisely to the uh, value of uh, our function uh, function f. And then of course, if we also use the other proposition, the one we just proved, we will also get a formula for the coefficients of uh, a n. Okay, so uh, for morphic functions, we we'll have a Laurent series expansion. So let's see how one can prove this, uh, this proposition. So proof. 
let me draw again the anus. This is the anus, this is small r, this is big r, which is contained in the domain u of our function. I'm not drawing the domain u anymore. Okay, and now we have some point z somewhere. Let's see if it's here. And we would like to express the f of z as a sum of a Loran uh, series. In order to this, do this, we pick up a slightly smaller anus. Here. The radius, the outer radius is big R prime and the smaller radius is small R prime. In other words, I'm considering now numbers so R is less than small R prime, less than big R prime, less than big R, in such a way that so that Z is contained in the in the annulus small r prime, big r prime, and that is zero. So z was fixed in the big annulus, and then of course, so this was an open annulus. For any z, I can choose a, a thinner annulus so that my z is contained in this uh, thinner annulus. And now the, this has the advantage of now the boundaries, the two circles bounding this uh, smaller annulus are for sure are contained in the domain of my holomorphic function. Instead, uh, this was an open annulus, maybe the domain of my holomorphic function ends here. So the, the boundary, the circle of radius big R is not necessarily contained in the domain. That's why I'm taking a slightly smaller, smaller Simple. Okay, so now these are paths contained in my domain, and uh, yeah, I would like to use these uh, paths and use the Cauchy formula. Uh, it will be convenient to divide, to add some segments, like one segment here. Let's make this up. And the segment say here, and then I will consider two contours. One contour is the contour we start from here. We go on this lower half circle to here. Then we go back here. Then we go here, and then we go here. Okay, this is the contour. Gamma 1. So the contour gamma 1 is doing this. Okay, so it's counterclockwise and it's doing this. And then I have another contour gamma 2. The contour gamma 2 is another color. I'm going here. I also want to go uh, counterclockwise, which means that here, so I go here, 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 here I go in the opposite direction, here I go here, 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 and here again. Okay, so again, the contour gamma 2 does this, here, here, here. And here. So it's another contour. And it's doing, it's doing this. Okay, these are two contours. Now uh, let's look at the function, say, g of w. G of W is F of W, W minus Z. 
Okay. Let's look at this uh, holomorphic function. This holomorphic function. And let's integrate this holomorphic function first. I want to integrate it on both uh, on both contours. Let's look first at the contour gamma two. Now notice that. Um, So, on the contour gamma 2, the integral of g of w, let me write what g of w is, f w w minus z in the w. So, here the function g of w. This is a function which is holomorphic in the whole interior of the contour gamma 2. Right? So the domain of F contains the whole arms. But of course, when we divide by W minus Z, we introduce a singularity, we introduce a singularity at Z. So the new function G of W, this is a holomorphic function for sure on our angles, and even the big one, R, small r, big r, centered at z0, but minus the point z. Okay, we have introduced a singularity at z because we are dividing by w minus z. And, but here, in the interior of the contour gamma 2, we don't have any singularity, so the whole of the, this function is holomorphic here. And then we know if we integrate a holomorphic function on a contour whose interior is completely contained in the domain of the function, what we get is zero. On the other hand, what happens if we integrate this same function but on gamma 1? Well, this is exactly Cauchy formula, right? We are we have our C, our point Z. This is contained in the interior of this contour, and the function f is holomorphic in the interior of this contour. And then we know that uh, this quantity divided by one over two pi would actually be the value of f at z. In other words, this integral is two pi times f of z. Okay, so this is Cauchy, this is the Cauchy formula. Okay. Just written and just multiply everything by 2 pi r. Okay, so now I have these two integrals. The first is zero, the second one is this. What happens if we add these two integrals? Okay, on the right side we, we get uh, to PIF, let me write an interesting now on the left. What do we get when we add these two integrals? Well, each of these integrals can be split into four integrals, just by integrating on half circles, then segments, half circles, segments, and so on. What do we see when we do all these uh, uh, splitting of these integrals? For instance, in the integral of gamma 2, I'm integrating on this uh, half circle, but here I'm also integrating on this. If I add up these two contributions, what I will get is the integral, and this is counterclockwise. So this is the usual integral on k z0 radius big r prime of f of w w minus z in w. Okay, this is the for now we have written the contribution this integral and this integral. Now what happens with this small smaller circle? Uh, the situation is the same in gamma 2 I see this part, and in gamma 1, I see this part. 
but now the orientation this is going clockwise. So since the convention when I write k is zero r prime is always counterclockwise, I should here write minus integral k z zero small r prime f of w w minus z d w. Okay, again, here I'm getting the contribution of integrating on this circle, but if I look at the arrows, now we're uh, this circle is now parameterized clockwise. But our convention when I write k is zero r, I always mean this is the circle on which we are running counterclockwise. And because of that, we get this this matrix. And then we have these segments, but this segment. Uh, so once we integrate in this direction, and the other time we integrate in the second direction, both times we are integrating the same function. So this contribution cancels and this also cancels. So we just get this formula. Then maybe we can just this formula divide, divide by 2pi and just rewrite it as so this is f of z is 1 over 2pi. This integral minus 1 over 2 pi times this other integral. Okay, so this is an important formula. If you want, this is a generalization of Cauchy, of Cauchy formula. Cauchy formula holds holds for um, when you integrate, say on a circle, or more generally, on a contour whose interior contains the domain of your homomorphic function. If instead of a circle you, you work with an analogous, then this is the kind of form, Cauchy formula you get. The value of f at z is the usual 1 over 2pi integral on the outer circle of the usual expression, f of t f of w divided by w minus z, Minus the same term, but now integrating on the inner in the inner circle. The inner circle comes up pops up with a minus uh, with a minus sign. Okay. Once uh, we have um, this generalized uh, Cauchy formula, we're in business. So remember, what we want to do is to find around series expansion for, for f. Now we have this ex expression, and now the dependence, this expression, the dependence of z is through this rational function, 1 over w minus z. And then what we will do is we will do exactly the same what Daniele did to prove analyticity of a homomorphic function, namely use the um, the geometric series in order to express this function of z as a power series in z, let us say, on this, uh, on this side. So maybe I keep the formula here and then it raise. the other part of the blackboard. So let's first look at this at this integral. So let's say in this integral w is on the circle center of the zero radius pr prime. And z instead was in the containing the angles. So this means that uh, I uh, mean, in, in order to simplify the the notation, let me let's say without lo loss of generality, we can assume that z zero is zero. We can just do a translation 
uh, no, remember, we wanted to have everything, make, to, to express everything as a Laurent series center that Z0, but now let's uh, uh, do a translation so that Z0 is, uh, is in the origin. So that we don't have to always to write uh, difference with uh, respect to C0. Okay, now we will say, let's take W in my circle, which is now a circle then centered at zero, radius r prime. So this is this circle here. Uh, this means that Z divided by W in absolute value is less than 1, right? Because the absolute value of z is less than r prime, and instead the absolute value of w is r prime. So this number has absolute value less than 1. Therefore, the function 1 over w minus z, I can just collect a 1 over w, this is 1 over w times 1 minus z over w. And see here, what do I see here? 1 divided by 1 minus, and here, there, here, we see a complex number whose absolute value is less than 1. So this is the sum of a geometric series, 1 over w. In this term, I can rewrite the sum n from 0. To infinity z to the n w to the n. Okay, just because this complex number has absolute value of less than one. And now we can take this one over w inside the sum just by adding one to this exponent. And by we can remove this. Okay. So this is good because now we have expressed this uh, fraction, this rational function, as a power series in Z, which is what we wanted. Now, and this will, will be plugged in in this formula. Now let's instead consider a W, which is, now we're looking at the other circle. So this is the circle centered at zero and smaller radius, r prime, smaller. So in this case, the absolute value of w is small r prime, and this is smaller than the absolute value of z. So this means that in this case, it's w divided by z, which has an absolute value smaller than 1. Therefore, I can write 1 over w minus z. This time what I will do, I will isolate a minus 1 over z. And this is 1 over, let me write first this, minus z. This becomes a 1 minus, and here, divided by z, so it's a w divided by z. Okay, this is just algebra. And here again, here I see the sum of a geometric series, because w over z is a complex number with absolute value less than 1. So this is minus 1 over z, and this is a power series, and goes to the 0 to infinity, and here I have w to the n, and below I have z to the n. And then again, I can put this here by removing it from here. Okay, so here I will, I am seeing positive uh, or non negative powers of C, and here we are seeing negative powers of, uh, of C. And then we will just, the last step is just to plug up these formulas. The first one holds for W on this bigger circle, and we will plug it in here. The second one holds for W in the smaller circle, and we will plug it here. So if we do this, now let me erase the 
formula and uh, yeah. what we get to so f of z this is one over two pi. What did we have? We have the integral over the bigger. So now it's the center is zero and the bigger radius is bigger prime. And here there was written f of w, f of w remains the same. And then there was it was divided by w minus z. But on this circle, we use this expression, so it's like in this sum n from zero, 0 to infinity, z to the n divided by w to the n plus 1. And this is an integral in d w. Then there was a term, there was a minus. One over two p i, an integral in the smaller circle, a prime again f of w, and again one over w minus c, for which now we use this expression. In this expression we put here minus, so this minus makes this become a plus. plus. And here we have a sum. Ah, this sum we can also switch the indices. Let's do it here. Maybe. This is the sum is minus sum instead. So we, we can start with one. And here we have w to the n minus one. And here is it to the end. Just to have everywhere the power z to the to the n. Uh, okay. And so here we have the sum and starts with one infinity w to the power n minus one and z has the power n. Indeed. We get this formula, and now we're starting seeing what do we see here. Uh, here we will see the regular part of our Laurent series popping out, and here we will see the principal part of the Laurent series. What we have just have to do is now again to switch this uh, series with the integral, and again we can we can do this. We can do this because we have uh, uniform convergence. And we have uniform convergence because of these conditions on, on, uh, on, uh, on W. And what we get is, so I keep this and erase these formulas, which you don't need anymore. What is this f of z? In this formula we get, let me write immediately this sum. Sum n goes from 0 to infinity. And then let me write this, uh, there is this term, 1 over 2 pi. There is an integral k0 r prime. And there is uh, this, uh, z to the n, this does not depend, the variable of integration here is w, so this z to the n can come out of the integral, it will, so here I can just write f of w uh, divided by w to the n plus 1 into w, and everything here is just multiplying z to the n. Uh, plus, Sum. This is the sum instead which starts with n equal 1, infinity, 
And again, I have one over two i integral. This is on the smaller circle, and the expression is have an f w f w w n minus one d w. And here I have one over z to the n. Again, this comes out of the integral just because it's an integral dw, but this is just variable z. Okay, what do we see here? Here we see exactly a Laurent series, and these are the coefficient. The coefficient a n for n greater or equal than zero is this, multiplied to the a n, and these are instead the coefficients of the negative powers of z. Here we see the negative powers of z. Okay. Then, of course, if you want, you can also play a bit with these coefficients and reprove again the formula that we know that must hold for the coefficients, but in a sense it's not necessary since we have already, uh, already, already done it. But this formula shows that f has a, is uh, the sum of a Laurent series. This, hold, the, the, this formula holds in this uh, uh, Analogs, which is a bit smaller, a radius of a smaller prime and bigger prime, but a smaller prime and bigger prime are, are arbitrary, so we get similar formulas all over the whole uh, analogs. And since the Laurent series uh, expansion is unique, we actually have found one uh, Laurent series expansion on the whole on the whole uh, on the whole analogs. Okay, so this is all I wanted to say about so, um, new things for today. Let me conclude with uh, maybe two more examples to see all this in action. So in the first examples, we started from uh, Laurent series and we determined the radius of convergence and then we even determined the sum of this Laurent series. Now we want to do the opposite. We start from a function and we want to express it as a sum of a Laurent series. So our example three is we start with the function. One, 1 over 1 minus z. So this is a holomorphic function. This is holomorphic on c minus 1. It has a singularity in the point 1 because of this one minus c in the denominator. And then we know. So Here is the singularity in one. Now, if we take a disk of radius 1, centered at 0, on this disk, of course, this is the sum of the geometric series. Now, what about instead the complement of this disk? Or rather, the complement of the closure of this disk? So, on the, on the analogs, one infinity centered at zero, f is homomorphic Okay? And this is an arcus. It's the whole, so this is kind of nothing else. But this is C minus the disk of radius one centered at zero closed. Okay, this function is holomorphic here, and then it should have a Laurent series expansion according to the last uh, proposition. How do we find it? So, uh, now it means if z is here, this means that z in absolute value is bigger than 1. And then this 1 divided by 1 minus z. This we can again collect a z and we can write it as, as we did in the proof actually, 1 over z minus 
1 over z, 1 divided by uh, 1 here minus 1 over z. Okay, again, simple algebra. And here, the absolute value of z is bigger than 1, meaning that the absolute value of 1 over z is less than 1. So again, this term is the sum of a geometric series. So this is minus 1 over z sum and goes from 0 to infinity, 1 over z to the power n. And this we can also rewrite it as minus sum n. So if we put this inside, here we get an exponent n plus 1, meaning that then we can also change indices and say n starts with 1, infinity, and here we have 1 divided by z to the n. Again. Okay, so what we saw is that this function has, this is the Laurent series expansion, and in this case we found a Laurent series expansion in which this is the principal part, it's the part with the, um, negative powers of z, and the regular part is just zero. So I could write plus zero, and this is the regular part. In this case we have no regular part. Laurent series expansion. Okay, so this is the Laurent series expansion of one over one minus c outside of the closed unit disk. Let's conclude with a similar example. Simply chose so this example four, and they chose f of z is now one divided by z minus one, z minus two. It's again a rational function. It's this rational function with now two singularities, we have a singularity 1 and we have a singularity 2. And again we are interested in looking at uh, the run series expansions in annuli which are centered at the origin. So now we have, uh, so the first possibility is to take uh, just a disk centered at the origin with the radius 1. And here, I'll leave it as you as an exercise. Here in this disk, you will, of course, find and be able to express f as the sum of a power series, the usual power series. Let's look instead now what happens if we are in this analysis where the smallest radius is 1 and the biggest radius is 2. Okay, on the arrow is 1, 2 centered at 0. So what, what does it happen? So what happens here? Here, so if z is here, um, well, first of all, maybe it's useful to write this, uh, the usual partial fraction decomposition of this, which in this case should be, so there will be a term 1 minus z and a term 2 minus z. And this should be a 1. Minus z minus one. This should be minus one. Let's see if I wrote it correctly. Yes, yeah. So you can check easily that this is exactly the function we 
we have to. Okay, now we have this, uh, this, uh, this expression, and now for this, now we are uh, Z is here, in particular it's outside this, uh, uh, this called radius 1, so we can use the formula that we found in example 3. So first, the formula of this was minus sum n from 1 to infinity, 1 to the z to the n. This is this, this guy, which holds because z is uh, in absolute value strictly bigger than 1. And here, here again, this term, I guess we can do it separately, 1 divided by 2 minus z is the same, I can write 1 half, 1 divided by 1 minus z over 2. And now, in this analogous, z over 2 in absolute value is less than 1 because we are in the analogous, so the absolute value of z is less than 2. So again, this is the sum of a power series, so this is 1 half, sum n goes from 0 to infinity, and here we have z to the n, 2 to the n. So in this case, here we get plus, and this 2, maybe we can also take it inside. So n goes from 0 to infinity, z to the n, 2 to the n plus 1. Okay? So what do we see here? So these are the positive powers of z, so this is the regular part of our uh, Laurent uh, expansion in this animus, and these are the, this is the principal part. So in this case, we found a Laurent series expansion in which uh, both uh, the, the principal part and the regular part are non trivial The last uh, region one could uh, consider is the region now outside of this disco radius 2. So let's keep this. Formula. Let's work on on the analogous A2 infinity centered at, uh, at zero. And so here we have Z in absolute value is bigger than two. And then now we can argue exactly like we argued in the uh, example uh, in the example three. So for this guy here, we already have a formula. In here, this was minus sum n going from one to infinity one divided by z to the power n. And this term here, one divided by two minus z. Now, I want to collect up uh, 1 over z. It's like a little bit of a sign minus, because then what I get is 1 over this minus z becomes a 1, and here I get a minus 2 over z. And now again, this 2 over z in absolute value is less than 1 because z in absolute value is bigger than 2. So this is minus 1 over z, and here we see the sum of this geometric series, n going from 0 to infinity, 2 to the n, z to the n. Okay, and then we can just plug it in here. This minus and this minus becomes a plus. And then we can also shift the indices 
Here we have z times z to the n will give you uh, give us an index n plus one, but then we can start with index one infinity, and we will get uh, z to the n below and two to the n minus one above. Okay, and then now in both sums we have z to the n, z to the ne negative powers, and this we can just then put these together. And so we get the formula n goes from 1 to infinity, 2 to the n minus 1, minus 1, so this from here and this from here, 1 z to the end. Okay. So in this situation we found our run series expansion on this uh, uh, infinite analogs, so everything with the modulus bigger than 2, and uh, the, this is the principal part, and the regular part is as an example 3, uh, 0. Okay, that's all uh, for today. And we will try to uh, connect uh, online, probably through Zoom uh, soon, so that if you have questions, we can uh, discuss them uh, live. Thank you very much.